Jim Levellen, Product Manager at Oracle Corporation. We are very pleased to welcome you at DOAC TV. Well, thank you for inviting me. What are the benefits of the new database and what does the architecture of the new database look like? Well, thanks for asking. I think I can deal with that quickly in this film. The benefits are that it solves these customer problems. We've heard about these all over the years. Provisioning. Make me a new database. Make me a database that's a good copy of an existing production database. And do it quick. Move this database from there to there. This is what DBAs do every day of their life. And it's a stress and a strain. Periodically, they have to patch and upgrade. That's a stress and a strain too. And this provisioning and upgrading, we attend to it very well with this new feature. And finally, the benefit that people perhaps think of when they first hear about this is that using this scheme, customers who want to consolidate can get a far better consolidation density than they can by using any other safe method. That means that patching will be better with pluggable database at in the time before we have... Very definitely. Data. And I can make that clear by showing you how the architecture works. Okay. So the um, best way to start is by a very brief recap of what happens in an Oracle database as you know it before 12.1. And what happens there is that it's all very nice and clean when you first uh, install it because all we have there is a description of the Oracle system itself. But the first time the customer installs objects, creates objects to be the back end of the application, then of course they have their metadata too, and their metadata is mixed up with Oracle's metadata. When they start to put employees and departments in their tables, at least that data is held by itself on table spaces for that purpose, but the metadata is all mixed up. And that basic proposition lets us understand how we did data pump generation 2 with transportable table spaces, which was a good leap forward, but it shows that why we still have to rely on mining out and replaying DDLs from the data dictionary when we want to move things around. So having said that, you can guess that the basic concept that uh, makes this whole system work is that we now have horizontally partitioned the data dictionary. So one partition contains the Oracle definition and only that, and the other partition contains the customer definitions and only those. So application definition? Yes, I mean by that the definition of those artifacts that the customer creates to be the back end of the application. Okay. And I mean it in a very general sense. If you grant a privilege to public, that's an artifact too. You run a script, it happens, and that's among the things that the script that creates the whole application backend does. And all those facts are represented in the partition of the data dictionary that represents the customer content. And this scheme that we have, horizontal partitioning, is, I'm sure you can guess, a particular implementation of the more general proposition of virtualization. So to put it more abstractly, what we have done is implement within database virtualization using the normal conceptual scheme. In other words, we've labeled everything of interest, every phenomenon of interest, with who it belongs to. Does it belong to Oracle or does it belong to the customer? And then we've implemented it in particular with these um, data dictionary facts by doing a horizontal partitioning scheme. And we can see now, if we just um, draw some boxes around it, that we've got two very distinct zones, the Oracle zone and the customer zone. And um, it's the Oracle zone that defines the things you're used to, PL SQL, views, and so on. But these are visible in the customer zone. And if we finally now just take out the detail, then we see it large as life. We have the root, that's the name we give to the Oracle zone, and we have the pluggable database, that's the name we give to the customer zone. And those two together are the two components of the CDB, the container database. But uh, in this picture there were uh, only one pluggable database. Yes. You can get more than one pluggable exactly. database, correct? I showed it in that order just to make the basic explanation as clear as I could. But, um, and in fact, we're going to come to the, um, the many in a moment. But before we go there, I'd just like now to emphasize the fact that 
what you could expect, given that this is an extension of transportable table spaces, and we know how those work, now we have a table space which contains the customer metadata too, then we can treat the whole pluggable database as a unit and unplug it. Indeed, then we can create an empty new container database, an empty new CDB, and plug it in there. And you asked earlier on about upgrade. Let me explain that now. Um, when we do a patch to the Oracle system, quite often all we do is change the binaries. Sometimes all we do is change the binaries and change package bodies in the Oracle zone. And under those circumstances, there are no knock-on changes in the customer creations, which means now we have this split, this horizontally partitioned data dictionary. When we move the pluggable database across, it's good to go immediately. And that's the clue to the new paradigm for patching and upgrading. The final part of that picture is that even if the upgrade was so severe that customer stuff has to be changed, well, we know how to do it, and we will do it when we have plugged in, but it's less work to do than it would be to do the whole thing in one endeavour, because here we've prepared the new Oracle stuff in advance offline. So we have only changes in the Oracle zone by patches and nothing ch uh, changes in the customer zone. That's correct? a very common case, yes. And so I have, can I minimize the downtime by uh, during patching? Yes, yes. Okay. In the most favorable case, the pluggable database needs no adjustment after plugging in. And this would be the case typically when a CPU has been applied or when a PSU, a patch set upgrade, has been done. Um, all we have to do is make sure that there exists a new CDB which is at the right patch level and then we unplug and plug and of course this will go quickest when we've arranged it that the old and the new CDBs share the same file system okay. so the files in question need no motion and that means that the operation is done entirely by two metadata steps adjust the metadata in the root of the original CDB, simply to say that this PDB is no longer there, and then adjust the metadata in the CDB of the new, in the root of the new CDB, to say that the PDB is there. And that in-out, unplug plug can be done in definitely less than a minute on an ordinary that's laptop. independent from the size of the pluggable database, that's correct? true, and that's a very exciting property of it, yes, okay. independent of the size of the pluggable database. So right. now we have upgrade in under a minute under many, many, many interesting circumstances. And then when it's a major step, going, for example, from 12.1 to 12.2, there will be stuff to do in the pluggable database, so it'll take longer, but it will still be less time than doing a traditional database, what we now call a non-CDB. Okay. So it's only now that we're ready to deduce the obvious, and that is that if we have a virtualization scheme that makes a clear distinction between the Oracle system, the root, and the customer system, then we are not limited to one occurrence of the customer system. We can have as many as we please. And in 12.1, we've set the limit somewhat arbitrarily at about 250. Oh, so many. I think 250 <coughs> will be enough for the <laughs> early adopters, yes. yes. Thank you very much for your coming. Goodbye. Well, thank you for your interest and attention. Mm -hmm.